This is the year that everybody fucking knows who Alex Cobb is. I don't know if you guys remember the weigh-in from the last YouTube video, but that was taken only three days ago. And today we're almost three pounds down just from that weigh-in. It is a beautiful thing to sit here and see all of your hard work getting paid off, not just visually, but also through consistency on the scale. Trust me when I say, I always have to consistently separate the coaching brain and the athlete brain. I think they give me a, a sense of understanding each side a little bit better, but I can tell you this much, it doesn't change the fact that it's still a headache. So now we're gonna get ready to take some photos and send them off to my coach for our check-in. Team reform is growing. <laughs> this is insane, guys. As, as the business owner, as somebody who's obviously fully invested in its future, it's crazy to see the direction that we're going, the trajectory that we're going, and where we've come from last year to where we are now, and making plans and future projections to where we're gonna be at in six months, another year. It's, it's insane. It's humbling. It's exciting, it's nerve wracking. We just made our biggest investment ever for team reform. And in its simplest form, it's investing in our future. It's investing in cleaning up efficiencies. It's investing in the value that we're giving back to our clients. I tell my clients this all the time and, and I say these on consultation calls and it's the reality, you know, this isn't just a one-on-one -on -one experience here at Reform. You know, we focus on so much more than that. You know, it's 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 togetherness feeling. Obviously, we focus on the executions. We focus on, you know, getting somebody's body from point A to C with making the in-between process of B as efficient and enjoyable as possible. Um, but even on the outside of that, it's it's it's. I had a vision when I started Reform, and the vision has only grown to be more impactful. Um, and I say it all the time: it's much more than the X's and O's. And these investments are scary, <laughs> fucking scary, but it's so worth it. And the future is so bright, man. All right, it is currently 11 a.m. I've been on back-to-back -back meetings all morning and it is time for me to eat. I'm starving. So we have a big decision to make. When I say we, I mean, yes, you and I, I need your help on this. And typically I am somebody who waits to the last minute every single show to decide which board shorts I'm going to end up wearing on stage, but I don't want that stress. <laughs> I wanna keep cortisol levels down. So we laid them all out. And honestly, this has probably just made my decision just that much harder. So I need you to know what you guys think. Let me know where your guys' heads are. But obviously we have the first pair, which are the manifested board shorts. So my collab with Alpha Elite, obviously a special meaning to me. I wore these on the Olympia stage. Next, look how nice these bad boys are. I've never wore these yet. I've never been too big on red, but I don't know, man. These are these are definitely a favorite right now. The maroon shorts, Alpha Elite logos on the pant leg. So far, that's definitely in my top two, top three. And then we have the neon yellow or green. I'm not a biggest fan of this one. I actually wore these on my pro debut uh, for the DC Pro and they kind of have bad luck. <laughs> First ever loss ever in the sport. But I wanted to leave it out here, let you guys help me make this decision. So it's an option, just not sure if it's my favorite option. Next, these ones are sentimental, extremely sentimental. These are the ones I actually went pro and look, it still even has my tag on it. It has all my, uh, has my number. I was gonna put it in a shadow box, never got around to it. 
so happy I didn't so I can break it out now. So thinking about these ones, these are in that top one to two right now currently. My food's calling my name right now, but it can wait. And then we have what I wore for the New York Pro, obviously extremely sentimental. And uh, I love the color, probably one of my favorite colors, but I'm not exactly sure it flows with the stage lighting. And yes, I take that into account. What the stage lighting background, all of that looks like should go into the decision of what board shorts you wear. Not only that, how your skin color comes to life when it is thrown in with a tan, right? So taking all that into account should help piece together and point you in the right direction for which color board shorts you're gonna wear. And then we have the white ones, which I've always wanted to wear. It's the manifested board shorts to collab with Alphalete. <sighs> Just not sure if white is gonna look too good on me, but I've always wanted to wear it, man. So I'm gonna wear these eventually, just not sure if I'm gonna wear it for this show. Calm down, my food is still yelling at me in the air fryer right now. But again, I need your guys' help. Help me figure this out. <laughs> this has been such a hard decision and it's still up in the air. But right now I have a top three, but before I throw that out there, maybe I'll release it in the next video. I need your guys' help on maybe your top two. Comment below your top two and help me make this decision. All right, so we got the pre-workout meal going down. And yes, <laughs> your boy did just shave. So if you notice a difference between the last scene, we had a quick intermission, but take a look here. We have 13 ounces of grilled chicken, the best looking and tasting grilled chicken you'll ever see in your life. Recipe is already on the YouTube channel, check it out. And then of course, a asparagus, I'm telling you guys, brain fog is real. But we have a serving of asparagus and super setting with a new show called Suits. We just absolutely demolished five seasons of SWAT. All right, I'm telling you guys, in two and a half weeks, we finished five seasons. So I'm telling you, when I'm not working, when I'm not training, I'm relaxing, recovering, and watching Netflix. That's been a consistent trend uh, and, and waiting <laughs> for my next meal. So we're gonna crush this meal. Head to the gym. We have a shoulder day today. Again, energy is low. Your boy is tired. Just learning the body, following the trend, staying consistent with what we know. And uh, the goal is to bring in that next level of conditioning on stage, guys. We are this close. We are this close. So I'm willing to suffer and do whatever I gotta do. But for now, eating with a smile on our face, watching some Netflix, and I'll see you guys at the gym. Only the real ones can relate. Currently bumping old Little Wayne for the remainder of this prep, throwing it back to the early 2000s. But more importantly, I wanna take a few minutes here to explain my current training compared to my previous training and my current split compared to my previous split. Now, a few things that you guys have to understand as you get closer and closer to a show, there's a few things that you guys have to account for. Mental fatigue, physical fatigue, low energy, and a lot less focus in the gym because of all those things that I just compounded. Now again, you throw that all into one, the chance of injury is a lot more likely. So there's a certain point in a prep for everybody that they need to be understanding of when their body is beginning to, starting to fight back against them a little bit. And when that is the case, you need to start to pivot, right? And that's what we're doing right now. So my current training split is the following, and let me know if you notice anything missing. Monday, chest, Tuesday, back, Wednesday, which is today, shoulders, Thursday, rest, Friday, upper chest, Saturday, back, and shoulders. So 
Do you guys notice anything? So let's first start off with the one that you guys might already be aware of. After competing at the Miami Beach Pro last year, I got feedback to basically not grow my arms anymore. And I got that feedback again after the Olympia. And you can tell they're really starting to tighten down on bigger arms. So we needed the shoulders to catch up, which I think we did a good job doing. But because of that, I completely stopped training my arms. So we're now going on almost 11 months, 11 months since we've stopped training arms. And because of that, we put, we were able to now put more focus on other areas, which is, i.e. our chest. So removing arms completely from the equation has gave me a lot more ability to focus on areas of improvement that I needed. Now, the one that a lot of people are, are likely going to comment about the most, which is the leg. The reality is I tore my meniscus just before the New York Pro last year, and I'm still dealing with the lingering effects of a torn meniscus. And if you have ever torn your meniscus before, you guys can relate to the fact that your knee just doesn't feel stable and confident since, especially as you get deeper and deeper into a prep, overall just body fatigue, compound with 90 plus minutes of cardio and 7K steps on top of that. So my body is tired, my mental is tired, and my focus is not as evident as it used to be. So I have to be smart in situations like this. At the end of the day, my training split, it's not quote unquote ideal, right? We gotta think for a long-term progressive because again, legs are still important. You gotta complete the X-frame. Um, for most people, they still need to grow their arms, but you gotta understand there's no one size fits all approach to anybody, right? So this is the same kind of take that I take with coaching. When you have to see somebody's body, see how we need to emphasize someone's body for the division, and sometimes it has to get extremely unique. And that's what we're doing now. So again, eliminating legs from the training split, arms have already been eliminated for a while, and just double downing on the shoulders, chest, and now back. I'm getting chills, man, <laughs> I'm getting chills. We're so close. Guys, we are so close to stepping on stage right now. Fuck. even though I have zero carbs in me, even though I can literally, it looks like a desert right now. I have like all these lines moving through my eyes. The motivation is fucking high, high. All right guys, so before I end this video, I was originally gonna end it at the gym, but I got home to one of the best gifts that I think I've ever gotten. Shout out to my client, Alexis. She is the absolute best. She actually won summer shredding in Tampa. First show ever, and now she's doing the October show. So we're gonna bring that trophy home too, but check this out. Like, the boys. <laughs> closer. Check it out. Like, it's us. Dude, look how insane. And it has our wedding date. I'm saying this. The top lens. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. In prep, when you're tired, you're fucking dead inside, you just want to wrap up, put on some Netflix, and eat some tacos, and eat carbless food. All right, guys, I am going to get my ass to sleep. It is way past my current bedtime, currently 9 p.m. I'm usually in bed by 8 30. Uh, but right now, we are two and a half, three weeks out, somewhere around there. And I'm currently smelling Megan's amazing food and I have no, no food left. So it's time for me to get to sleep, I'm tired, drained, but we are one day closer to shocking the world. Guys, we are on the road to 10K subs. The last video helped us jump tremendously. It was a blessing to see a one out of 10. We have been absolutely killing it. I love you guys, I appreciate you guys. Subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe. Don't get a wife who eats good Chinese. Oh wait. Not Chinese, Mexican. Mexican food in front of you. I did, I'm just daydreaming about tons of different foods right now. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully we have carbs. Peace. <laughs>